Hi everyone, welcome to the Earth Science Regents Review podcast series, created by Hummocks Middle School Earth Science Department. Today we're going to be talking about the climatic conditions here on the planet. In order to understand climate, you have to have an idea about what weather is. Weather is going to be the short-term conditions within the atmosphere. The weather today is very different from the weather, say, last Thursday. Compare that with climate, climate are going to be the long-term conditions. Scientists accumulate data on precipitation, temperature, pressure, and they basically come up with an average for a specific region. That's going to tell you the type of climate you're going to be found in. So temperature and moisture are very big components of climate. So you can see within this map, you see all the different climatic conditions on the planet and all the different zones. Now let's talk about some of the factors that are going to influence some of these zones. And there's going to be seven of them that we'll talk about. First one's latitude. Latitude's going to by far going to be the most important factor that influences climate. And what it does is with your latitude, you're going to have a different temperature. So as you increase your distance away from the equator, your temperature is going to drop. So as you technically get closer to the North Pole or closer to the South Pole, you're going to have a colder temperature. Take a look at this map. San Antonio has a much warmer climate because it's closer to the equator. Winnipeg has a much colder climate because it's technically further away from the equator. The next factor is going to be altitude. Altitude and latitude have a very, very similar relationship. At sea level, it tends to be warm, but as you increase your altitude, your temperature is going to drop. Some mountain ranges, even in the summertime, have snow-capped peaks on them because the temperature is just so cold. So very, very similar relationship with latitude. Take a look at this map. This map has two cities, Guayaquil and Quito. Guayaquil and Quito are, are roughly at the same latitude but they have different altitudes. Guayaquil is more sea level based. Quito is a, has a much higher altitude. So even though they're at the same latitude, they have dramatically different temperatures. Quito is colder because it has a higher altitude. The next factor is going to be mountain ranges. You have two parts of a mountain. You have what's called the windward side of the mountain. The windward side of the mountain is, tends to be very cool and wet. That's going to be the side of the mountain where moisture is going to be coming off of the ocean. Once that moisture laden air mass hits the mountain range, orographic lifting takes place, which means that the air mass is going to be forced up and over top of the mountain. As that air mass gets forced up and over top of the mountain, expansional cooling takes place. Because there's less pressure at the top of the mountain, the air mass expands. As the air mass expands, it cools to the dew point and you get precipitation. The air mass now is quite dry. And because it's quite dry, it's going to be a little bit more dense. It's going to sink down over top of the leeward side. And as you increase the pressure, as you decrease the altitude of that air mass, those molecules tend to get compressed. So you get what's called compressional warming on the leeward side of the mountain. Now here's a quick diagram that indicates that the windward side is on the left, the leeward side is on the right. Actually, the leeward sides of the mountain, because there's such a lack of moisture, that's what we call the rain shadow effect. Because the air mass is so dry on the leeward side, you tend to get a lot of deserts on leeward sides of mountains. The next factor is going to be oceans. Now, because water has such a high specific heat, it's going to heat very slowly and it's going to cool very slowly. So all that concept, the entire concept of specific heat, is going to have a major impact on climatic conditions, specifically on coastal regions. Coastal regions because your winters tend to have a little bit warmer waters. Okay, your warmer waters tend to hold on to heat energy from the previous summer. Because the water's warm, the air is warm, so coastal regions tend to have a little bit warmer winters. And the summers tend to be a little bit cooler because the water is still cold from the previous winter. Your summertime temperature waters tend to be a little bit cooler. That means your air mass tends to be a little bit cooler. So coastal regions are dramatically influenced by the oceans themselves. And you can see here the difference between Vancouver, which is a coastal city, compared to Winnipeg, which is a more inland or continental city. You see that Vancouver has much, much warmer winters and a little bit cooler summers compared to Winnipeg, which has very cold winters and relatively warmer summers. And the reason why Winnipeg has such a big, big difference in yearly temperature is very simply because land has a low specific heat. It heats quickly and it cools quickly. Ocean currents have a major impact on climates as well. If you live near a warm water current, the air above the warm water tends to be warm. 
if you live near a cold water current, the air above the cold water tends to be cold. So what will happen is, again, coastal regions will have warmer winters and coastal regions tend to have a little bit cooler summers relative to the type of air mass that's going to be associated with. So again, you take a look at Arica and Rio de Janeiro. They have dramatically different temperatures because they're close to different types of ocean currents. You see that Arica is near a cold water current and Rio de Janeiro is near a warm water current. So very, very interesting to see that ocean currents have a major influence on the climate of two cities that are about the same latitude. The last one is going to be your planetary wind belts. Okay, and your planetary wind belts are actually going to go over into, we'll talk a little bit about storm tracks as well. But when you talk about winds that travel over water, they tend to be very moist. Winds that tra travel over land tend to be very dry. So depending on what type of wind belt that you live through, you could get different types of climatic conditions based upon the factors that are characteristic of that specific type of wind. So you see your planetary wind belts here. You see that they travel in all different directions. Northern hemisphere are curved to the right, southern hemisphere are curved to the left, but based on where your location is going to be found in conjunction with a wind belt, you could have a little bit of a different climate. And that leads us into our storm tracks, which are essentially going to be influenced by what we call the westerly wind belt. So all of our storms on the planet essentially travel from west to east because the jet stream itself travels from the west coast to east coast counterclockwise around our planet. So hurricanes, for instance, are going to take a typical storm track. They're either going to enter into the Gulf of Mexico or they're actually going to travel up the east coast. So those are just some of the storm tracks that you really should have an idea about. The storms that travel west to east across the United States, for the most part, they're called mid-latitude cyclones. And then obviously our, our hurricanes, which form in the southern Atlantic Ocean, they're going to travel in the direction towards the United States, and they're either going to enter the Gulf of Mexico or travel up the east coast, because very simply because of the wind belts that they travel with and the Coriolis effect as well. So there's our typical storm track of a low pressure center that's called a nor'easter as it travels up the east coast. Okay, that started off on the west coast and traveled east. And then also our typical storm track for a hurricane entering into the Gulf of Mexico there. So that's it for now. Those are just basically some of the factors that influence climate. And we'll talk to you soon. Goodbye.